What's up, math fans? To follow this video, you should have already seen my videos on FOIL, multiplying binomials, and also how to recognize perfect square trinomials. Um, in order to multiply binomials, you use first outer inner last or the distributive property. In order to recognize a perfect square trinomial, they're usually in the form that looks like this where the first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and the middle term is actually the first and last term times two. Um, let me give you a specific example in a second. So the next thing is the moral of the story of this video, which is how to complete the square. So I'm gonna get back to this in a second also. So right now I want you to know how to complete the square. In order to complete the square, you have to understand what I mean by completing the square. You need to recognize a perfect square trinomial. It looks like this. Here's the trinomial that I always teach. Looks like this. Uh, AX squared plus BX plus C. There's your trinomial, it's called a quadratic. And if it's a perfect square trinomial, again, the first and the last term will be perfect squares. And the middle term will be this number times this number times two, so two XY. What do I mean by that? Let's look over here. If you look at this, you should be able to recognize if it's a perfect square trinomial or not x squared, that's a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square, and 8x is really x times 4 times 2. And what I said here, these two numbers times 2. What is he talking about? Let's say I wanted to factor, right? What times what gives me that? x plus 4 times x plus 4. That's it. So really, since this repeats, I just have to write it once as x plus four squared. Something squared makes this a perfect square trinomial. If it can be represented as something squared, it's a perfect square trinomial. So notice again, the x and the four, here's my x squared, here's my four squared, and the middle is really just x times four times two, which is eight x, all right? now. Let's look at the next one. I wish, I wish, I wish this was a perfect square trinomial, but it's not. How could I complete it so that it was or it would be a complete perfect square trinomial? What number should go here? And then you're probably wondering why I have two spaces. Well, think about this for a second. Let's say I give you $5. Is that the same as giving you five plus $1? If I gave you $5, is that the same as giving you five plus $1? No. Is it the same as giving you five plus one minus one dollars? Yes. So in math, you can add whatever you want to a term as long as you also immediately subtract it. Then it cancels out and it doesn't change the value. So you can do whatever you want as long as you don't change the value. So I'm going to do whatever I want, but as long as if I add something, I'm going to have to immediately subtract it. Let's see. What number do I want here so that this is a perfect square trinomial? Uh oh. This is x squared, this is 10x. What number should go here? Let me think. When it was eight in the middle, didn't I use four and four? So if it's 10 in the middle, I'm gonna use, uh, hmm, 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 five and five, right? So that means I need a 25 here. Look at this thing, trinomial, perfect square trinomial. Factor it. What would the factors look like? It would look like, x plus 5 times x plus 5, right? This times this gives you that. But don't write it twice, just write it once. Write it as x plus 5 squared, okay? So if it's a perfect square trinomial, I can rewrite it like this squared. And actually, I want to rewrite it like this squared. That's the whole point of this video. I want to be able to rewrite it like this because it's easy for me to graph this. It's a little bit harder for me to graph that. Um, but what did I just say? If I give you $25, I have to immediately take away that $25 so that the original value doesn't get changed, okay? So then this minus 25 carries over here, and there is my final answer. Starting to get the hang of it? Try this next one. What if it's an odd number? What goes here? Well, think about this number. Where, how did you get to 25? 10 divided by 2 squared. Remember that 10 divided by 2 is 5 and then you square it, and that's how I knew to put a 25 here. So that's why I said use b over two squared. So here, what do I put? If it's an odd number, just five over two squared, that's it. And if I add five over two squared, I have to subtract five over two squared to keep 
the value the same. Now, I want to factor this thing that's very, very simple. It would be x plus 5 over 2 squared. Sorry, I need another parentheses. Squared like that, and then this minus 5 over 2 carries over. Simple as that. All right, let's try another one. What if it's a minus sign in between? No big deal. Divide the six, uh, divide negative six over two, and then square it. That gives you negative three, but when you square it, you still get positive nine. Plus nine here, immediately minus nine. All right, how could I rewrite that? Uh, let's see. X minus three, right? Because it's the square root of this number. So X minus three squared, and then minus this thing just carries over, 9. There's my answer. There's my answer. Uh, here's a hard one. Is this a perfect square trinomial? No, 7's not a perfect square. Seven's actually in my way. It's annoying. I don't want it. I'm going to slide it over. So I'm going to write plus 7 over here. And then I'm going to say I need perfect square trinomial here. So I'm going to add something and then immediately subtract it also. So what can I add and subtract? Well, if the middle number is a 12, remember what I use. 12 over 2 squared. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Add 36, subtract 36. Now, here is a perfect square trinomial, just like I had here, just like I had here, just like I had here, and here. So, let's factor it. That's x plus 6 squared, and then the minus 36 carries over, and the plus 7 also carries over. So now you gotta go one more step. Your final answer is x plus 6 squared minus 29 because I combine my like terms. So here you have an example uh, when the middle term is positive, when the middle term is odd, when the middle term is negative, and when there's an extra number just floating there for no reason, you add it at the end. Okay? Any questions? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See ya.